Hi guys, it's Peter and welcome to the channel. And today we're making a second video about my custom build VESC XR with dual battery. And as far as I know, that's the first uh, X, dual battery XR in the world. No one did build before anything like that. I meant two batteries in, inside, I mean, enclosure inside the board itself. I'm not talking about the range booster where mounted in the front or in a, on the fender like I used to have or a range extender you have in a backpack pretty much that's a one concealed unit no extra wires nothing it has 18s two piece uh, battery on the back and 18s one p battery in the front cells i did use a 21 700 and it's a molly cell p42a same as my gt the way it turns I mean, I just make it a final touch with custom made uh, real uh, labels. Looks really nice because the factory one will not fit. I'm using a smaller uh, power button and smaller charging uh, port. And plus it's, 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 little, it's like half inch forward. Anyway, the way it turns, like I said, I really like it. The way it performs, I love it. I mean, I wrote it already, uh, this XR with VESC on a single battery setup. Last season, I put it to uh, almost a thousand mile. I really love it compared to original XR or my GT. And uh, pretty much, like I said, uh, it turns really nice. Uh, since we posted last video on the YouTube and on the Facebook groups, we got so many questions. People wondering how I build it, uh, how much it costs, uh, pretty much what part I did modify it. Uh, to be honest, I can tell you up front, uh, to do that build, you modify it pretty much everything besides rear foot pad. Rear foot pad still the same, rails modded, motor harness modded, uh, main harness modded, all connectors, those connectors like a foot pad connector, a motor connector, uh, hull sensor connector, you, you cannot use it because simply there's not much room. Uh, let me uh, let me take it apart a little bit and I will show you what I'm talking about. Also, I mean, same time when, when, when I'm taking apart, I'm just gonna remove the fender for, for easy access of front foot pad. Uh, people wondering uh, how much that build will cost to build something like that and what part you will need it. Uh, I mean, for, for sure you will need it two badgers of front bumpers and two I mean, not, not I'm sorry, not front bumpers, because if you look at it, it actually is the rear bumpers. Front one doesn't have handle. And with this build, you will lose privilege to have a front handle. You have to come out, you have to use it. The side one option uh, as optional, or you have to make your own handle. But like I said, the front one, you, you will lose it. Pretty much you will need two bumpers, uh, two, two battery boxes, Let's see. Uh, of course, the vest controller. Then uh, you will need a battery. You pack, build it, or or buy it pre-built already. Like my case, I tried. I mean, I did all builds. I mean, all modification by myself. Besides welding, I mean, I know how to weld steel, and uh, we got welder to do that. But since the rails, it's aluminum, and our welder is not capable to do aluminum, uh, plus I never weld aluminum. Well, if our welder did have opportunity, uh, options to weld aluminum, I, I probably will, will uh, do it. But like I said, since I never weld aluminum before, uh, I didn't, uh, didn't want to take chance. And, and uh, I, I, I took it to a welding shop for uh, $75. They did, I, I, I make it uh, pretty much, I mark it where, I mean, what need to be welded. And they did welding part. Uh, I did uh, cleaning and ca uh, drilling new, new holes that I did. But for welding part, they charged me 75 bucks, which in my opinion, it's, it's really affordable, really reasonable, and I'm glad. I did, I let them do it instead uh, I did, if, if I did buy on my own. Pretty much uh, since my board has a dual configuration, like I said, uh, 
you with dual configuration you run you using more connectors probably more cables uh, because you have to run wire harness from front to back i mean i'm sorry from back to front then you make a couple splitters inside the, the controller box for uh, yeah let me take a foot pad as well because then i can show you some modification of a foot pad as i mean as well because like i said you modifying pretty much anything i mean i'm sorry i do apologize my english is not perfect uh, the thing is uh, english is not my first language and it's not a second language either <laughs> pretty much please forgive me uh, and uh, yeah like i said okay. uh, you do my mod modding pretty much everything in this board uh, here's a footpath uh, that's original uh, wire harness big and bulky here's a little tiny one five pin i did use it five pin for three pin for sensors and two pin positive negative for uh, status light uh, status light is completely optional but i do like it in that case when board is on uh, status light will glow to show you i mean that the board is on uh, here's a uh, machine itself i'm not gonna take in i'm not gonna take it to uh, rear pad because in the rear pad pretty much is the same box with full size uh battery very important what you see here uh, let me point it like that here you will see 18s 2p i mean i'm sorry 18s 1p uh, uh 21700 uh battery pack uh, custom built here's a bms and also controller is right here i mean if you look at other side of course uh the but box lid you using as a cooling thing also inside well a camera probably is not gonna pick it up i did uh added extra aluminum and i bend it as a l shape towards battery why i did that in case of an accident you hit something the battery is gonna move battery i did uh that uh, black foam wrapping on the other side, which uh, at, uh, hold, uh, touching towards the lid, I apply, I, I spray it with glue, and pretty much battery it sticks to, to the lid itself pretty good. Uh, plus, like I said, the cooling thing, and you not can see from here, and you will not see it because it, it, it's really there. But like I said, I bend that cooling thing before I mount it on the cover and mount it as a vest. I bend that L shape, and I'm pretty much like that in an angle towards battery it works like a, a extra protection make sure the battery in case impact will not move and crush at your whisk uh, also the whisk since you're using 21 uh, 21 700 cells if you're using if you're going with uh, 18650 cells is a little bit shorter you will have additional uh, half centimeter uh, room i'm using 21 700 cells they are longer not much room left i mean well for bms i mean there's a plenty room but for vesk not much on the vesk you have to remove one capacitor uh, i'm sorry guys you will not see it from 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 where where the camera is uh, why are you doing that to make sure the vesk will go as close as possible towards front give it a little bit more room uh, from my vesk to a battery i got additional almost a centimeter as a crash zone like I said, plus that uh, uh, sink, uh, cooling sink, uh, I mean, in reinforcement, and we'll hold it. Uh, about, about welding part. Since, uh, like I said, since uh, original rails was made for original box, and there is a cover, I mean, a connector guard. Guard will fit this way, and if you ever take it apart, your XR, and mostly, mostly people who's gonna watch this video, they probably did multiple times, they know that connector guards, those brackets will fit into frame itself. You have to weld them out and inside you have to machine it. Make sure the box will fit inside the reel. If you not cut them off, if you not weld it and cut it, the box will not fit. And I do recommend it like I did, 
before you machine it inside, you weld it outside. Yeah, because if you cut it inside, the, the portion of aluminum with the part like, like here, and then start welding, the weld, uh, welding process will shrink aluminum and, and the rails gonna go out of shape. Yeah, pretty much, uh, like I said, uh, custom main harness, custom, uh, you extended your uh, power lead, I mean the, the main harness from motor, uh, half sensor wires you extended because you connect them straight to a whisk. Like, it's, it's, it's a big project, it's not, it's not simple and it's not straightforward. Uh, I don't want to give you impression like it's so simple, do this modification and then your whisk, uh, your uh, XR with uh, 18S three piece will be really, I mean, and it is really, uh, I mean, dream machine. But it's not as simple as, as do as it sounds, maybe for someone. Like I said, it, 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 it's quite, quite hard to do. And especially, for, I mean, the thing is, uh, that's the first my uh, build with, in that configuration. And every time when you build something, it's uh, it, because it's the prototype stage, you never know how it's gonna go, which part you have to modify it, which uh, supplies you have to use it. It take longer and uh, it's, it, you go extra miles in here and there because it's a prototype. For example, if for this uh, board, uh, for me to take, uh, it take almost two months to get all supplies, to build it a battery pack. In the meantime, when, when I'm waiting for something else, I was building a packs. Then when I got packs ready, I assembled it, I, I ordered it. Uh, I mean, I got to uh, start building a wire harness. And first wire harness, I was going with uh, 12 gauges, main, main wire. It turns too thick. I did switch it to 12, 12 gauge. Uh, connectors, I bought first uh, uh, one style connector, then decided to go with other style connector. Pretty much you always kind of change insertion for better, better option, better answer for this or that. Uh, same thing like I said on the foot pad. Foot pad, first I thought, since it doesn't have too much room, too much uh, uh, room for, for connector. Like I said, connectors simply, do, those connectors will not fit. Because like I said, I mean, uh, the battery box, because it's a rear battery box, fits same as, as in the back. There's no room where you can edit those connectors. You have to switch it. And I thought it's gonna go with magnetic uh, style footpath. To be honest, uh, even some people like it. Uh, I not really see uh, myself using those, those uh, foot pads with magnetic sensors. I said, no, I have to use it, uh, leave it original, just rewire it, uh, use a smaller connector and uh, it's gonna be fine. Uh, pretty much, even, even uh, like I did. Uh, on the one hand, it looks quite simple and straightforward, but to be honest, because when you put it foot pad um, before you mount it, you will recognize it over here. There's not much room. Pretty much I did machine it, the foot pad itself, that uh, surface, the back surface wood. I machine it almost three millimeters down. I mean, uh, make it a channel to make sure that wire will fit in. Otherwise, like I said, it's not much room. And now the wire fit in the channel. I, I, I mean, I use glue to attach it, make sure it's there. And when you put it together, the wire will go where the channel on the, on the lid itself. <sighs> Pretty much like I said, it's a, it's a kind of big project, especially for first prototype, but I'm glad I really did that. And on one hand, it's probably thanks to future motion. <laughs> I, never, I never even think before to do something like that, start building my own VASC board or so. And when I got my XR, I was so happy. Then uh, Future Motion released the GT. I got my GT, I was so happy. In the first three months, I put it a thousand miles. But then when the GT uh, started failing, the way Future Motion treat me, and they treat me like shit on the warranty repair. And I kind of said, okay, fuck that shit. I mean, uh, I was gonna tear it apart, figure out what's going on. I tear it apart on my GT, I found it was going on, I fix it. And after that, when I got that bad treatment from Future Motion, they kind of pretty much make me to start thinking uh, 
probably there's a way I can build it much better board than they do. I'm not saying do not buy a Fusion Motion board. Like I said, a GTI I like it. Even has some, some design flaws, some uh, uh, quality issue, but I do like it. Yeah. But what I'm saying, thanks to them shitty uh, customer service, they forced me to go to DIY project. And I'm glad I did. Well, guys, <laughs> pretty much that's all, I, uh, that's all I got for this video. I hope it was not too long, not too boring. If you guys did enjoy it, thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any future videos, subscribe. We will really appreciate it. Thank you.